Also known as Encanti. Yes. Hi. Thank you for being on the show. And I'm here with Fallon. Hi! We're here together. With Fallon Daily's toast. Woohoo! And trying to be as daily as possible. Uh, and toasty as possible. And toasty as possible. <laughs> I love you. Can I hold your hand for just a second? Both? Yeah, yeah, both. Okay. Actually, let's do like a pancake and ready. Okay. No. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. You're like transferring energy. That's great. Cool. Yeah. We're mid probably... energy transfer. We're like. I love energy. Yeah, we're yeah. about 150 kilobytes there. <laughs> so um, close. I... So yeah, so we're here at Maven in Cambridge on Mass Ave. And Maven is a DJ and production school that Ben has taught at in the past, mm. and is actually he's working a class tonight. That's right. Yeah, and so you've been back. Now, for those of you who don't know Ben, he's a sound designer, synthesist, electro electronic music ex <laughs> um, Can you talk a little bit about, like, the moment that you played that house party in 2005 back in Alston? Oh, yeah. Can, that, and, like, and my then first entry. Yeah, that, that was my first... Uh, that was the earliest show that I could... Uh, that I documented playing at here mm -hmm. in Boston. I, w I was in college, I was going to school at Berkeley, and at the time, Ableton Live, mm -hmm. which is the software I teach and, and use and love, mm -hmm. um, it was just a toy. You couldn't do you couldn't do MIDI in it, you couldn't play instruments, it, w it wasn't really thought of seriously as a as a music production tool. Mm -hmm. um, instead it was kind of a performance tool, and, and what I did is I took it and I, I put the Beatles in there, and Fatboy Slim, and the Rolling Stones, and all the music from my iTunes library that I really loved. And I just made a huge list of tracks I like, and I would go to house parties and I would just like do live mashups. And these were just Alston, grimy, mm -hmm. you know, basement house parties. That's and so, and so yeah, my earliest memory was just jamming on a Ableton Live version 2 or version 3 mm -hmm. in someone's basement. And it was a cracked version. So I had, uh, I had, win I had uh, uh, what was it called? Qu quick time player in the background. Mm -hmm. So I would anticipate the live would crack. And as soon as it did, I would just hit play on quick time. And I think it was like, da -da 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 and I would be like, wow. Oh, that's really deep. This is a good transition, you know. <laughs> while I reloaded the program. So. Yeah. yeah. What does it What does it feel like to you, for you when you like complete a track? I mean, actually, there's 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 a thing, I, and I think that a lot of producers must must get this. Mm -hmm. Every time you listen to one of your tracks, you're critiquing, mm -hmm. you know, because you're trying to make that next decision. Because after all, when you listen to music, all you're hearing is a bunch of decisions that go by. Yeah. What kind of kick drum should I use? What kind of synth should this be? Draw, draw, draw. Every single decision in the arrangement and the mix, someone had to make at some point. So at, when a track is finally done, the most beautiful feeling is being able to listen to it mm. without, without making a decision, without being like, I need to fix that. W knowing either it's too late or that it's all finished up, it's done mastering, and you could just, it's amazing, even though you've heard it a thousand times while you're writing it, that first time that you hear it when it's like fully mastered and there's nothing wrong with it, it's just magical because it feels like you're finally hearing it and just enjoying it for the first time. Mm. That you can hear something and not, and not be, you know, not be taking notes about what to do to it next. And, and so, 
you know, I finished up the album two and a half weeks ago, so two and a half weeks ago was actually the first time that I heard all these tracks without mm-hmm. being, you know, changing little nuances about it. And mm-hmm. It just, it, it feels, it feels amazing, because, mm-hmm. you know, it's like the, f- so fresh. <sighs> that's a, that's a really good question. Um, I think every year there's one or two shows that me and Zebler do that, that really stand out. Mm-hmm. Um, but one that I particularly remember just right off the top of my head was last year we played a festival called Rootwire. Mm-hmm. And that was actually the first show that we had played with Ganavia, the singer. Mm-hmm. And she is, she is an incredible talent. She's a classically trained Indian vocalist. Mm-hmm. And she's, she's beautiful. She has this beautiful sari that she wears, you know. Mm-hmm. And so she's dressed up traditionally. She has her nice makeup on. And, and, and when she got onto stage and when the ziggurat lighted up with our, with mm-hmm. our visuals and then the spotlight right on her you could just feel the vibe like move in and up to the stage and you just feel the goosebumps that people are having with her with her voice mm-hmm. and 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 that that show and that moment definitely is has has stuck with me for yeah. being one of one of the one, one of the pivotal uh ex- Zebler and Canty experiences that we've had Uh, you know, I kind of fell into teaching. Yeah. I, I didn't go to school for teaching. Oh. Um, cool. I just, you know, I went to school to learn how to make music at Berkeley. And, um, you know, I'm friends with the the guys that started Maven here. You and, are. And for, for a while, <laughs> they were talking to me about about uh, opening up a, a, a new kind of school. It's, it's going to be a DJ school and a production school. And... I feel like two years before Maven opened, they said, hey, when we finally get the school going, would you come and teach Ableton? Mm-hmm. And it just happened to be a winter where I wasn't doing a lot. Mm-hmm. And they said, we're finally going to do it. We're going to open up. Can you start working in January? And uh, I said yes. And I think this was 2013 in January. And I, I taught for a good five months until May. And then I got asked to come and do a workshop at Berkeley Valencia. Mm-hmm. And they pretty much hired me on the spot. So I fell into teaching really, really, really fast. And then after only about a year at Berkeley Valencia, I just got promoted to um, uh, assistant professor. <laughs> so Whoa, in, in the span of, span of two years, I, I went from not really being a professional teacher at all, and now I'm, I'm kind of you know, on a track to having it be a, you know, a, a, a long-lasting career. And so yeah. it's great. I feel like teaching found me. Yes. I didn't go after looking for a teaching job. It just, it just kind of fit with me mm-hmm. very naturally. By golly, everyone's taking notice, Ben. <laughs> this is so cool. Uh, so you've only been here for, four, you're only here for four days. And only four days, I know. Oh, ah, so <laughs> quick, but... Um, I'll add some like... You. I'll do it, okay, fine. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just here and here and gone again. Just, you're here and yeah, gone again. And yeah. when when will you be back? Um, that is that's not known right now. But I, I know that Zebler and Candy Experience will be going on tour again next year in 2016. Oh, fabulous! We're, we're probably going to start off and end the tour on the East Coast like mm-hmm. we normally do. Mm-hmm. And I'm just about to go back to Valencia and have a conversation with Zebler. Zebler, who's in Valencia, by the way, he's te- he's teaching out there. Hey, Zebler. <laughs> And uh, I, so, it's such a strange thing for me to be here in Boston. Talking talking with you and to him be holding it down in, in, Valence, in Spain. Yeah. And uh, anyway, we're about to have a conversation about w- what our tour route should be. I think I'll probably be over in Spain until about around May. Yeah. Very so cool. it'll be a while. All right, well, I'll, I'll speak directly to the people. Yes. Um, so if you're first getting into electronic music, uh, you can go online, you can check out a bunch of tutorials, I'm sure. You can talk to your friends, you can, you can uh, read the manual, maybe, you know. But the, the, the real point of electronic music, the real point of music is, is feeling, you know. Music's a feeling process. And when, when you hear something and it inspires you, don't let go of that feeling. That's what it's about. You, it's your mission to create that for other people. Mm-hmm. If you know, um, I wouldn't make electronic music if I hadn't heard electronic music and been like, "Oh my ah! god!" You know, so oh. that feeling of "Oh my god!" You know, that slack jaw, like, like no. something's just beautiful. <laughs> 
hang <laughs> on to that feeling with oh. all of your heart and soul and yeah. that is what you're trying to make that is what you're trying to reproduce and that will come in the form of all sorts of different instruments and production techniques and mm. and genres and no matter what you choose for your median and how you choose to go about it just keep your eye focused on what you're really doing ev evoking emotion in other people mm. Mwah. Mwah. go forth go forth thank you so much <laughs> It's beautiful. Uh, it's it's true. It's it the is, truth. yeah. It's yeah. Just and so it's something I feel like schools don't talk about often enough. Mm -hmm. You know, um, at, at I, I went to school at Berkeley, yeah. amazing jazz institution. I learned so much about music, and um, and but I, I find a lot of it's to be very intellectual. Mm -hmm. And you just immerse yourself in music when you're learning music, and and you learn about all your harmony and your counterpoint and stuff like that. And it's easy. I think it's easy to lose sight of the real point of music, which is, mm. which is to inspire emotion <laughs> and to, to give someone a feeling. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I, I think that people, if you want to get into dance music, go out and dance. Yeah. Just dance, move, allow it to influence you, allow it to change your life, you know? I mean, I, I don't like seeing musicians that just go to a dance party and they're just like, yeah, that's pretty good. That's a good beat. That's a good kick drum, bro. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's like you know, you're 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 missing the real thing that is there to absorb, which yeah. is which is you know the the the, the, wow. the wowness, the yeah, you yeah know. all the, the your neurological system being affected. You, oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. incredible. I meant that when I said like heart palpitating, like listening to your music has a genuine effect on my body, like on the insides of me. I feel like you know my heart and chest <laughs> opening up and my mind just kind of being massaged and oh, yeah glad. it's I'm really, really impressive you know i move a lot when i make music yeah i, I listen and i'm just like, <laughs> I, try, I try to like mimic with my body how the music makes me feel mm -hmm. you know um i think that a lot of things are in the shoulders a lot of things i feel in the chest yes. a lot of things i feel in the arm i'm moving my arm when i'm working on stuff mm -hmm. and you might look silly but who cares you know like you just it, it's it's a it's it's a mind body connection when you when you're working on music and 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 it's just it's important to be a good listener as much as you are a good a good maker you yeah. know and do you get to do much with i know with teaching and working on this album um you do you have time to play around with visuals or do any of the the visual stuff because i know you're into that also well i actually taught a class on how to make music videos last year you did <laughs> and that was a really hard class to teach because I'm s I'm still an amateur when it comes yeah. to video, but I, I had to I had to to learn how to teach video mm -hmm. and and um, that I, I think in learning how to teach it I learned so much about video. So la last year I, I I picked up some some pretty good cinematography skills mm -hmm. and and I learned a uh, little After Effects and and Premiere. But lately, I've not been working on video. I've just been working on the album and just school. And I don't go out and party much. I just stay at home uh, with my with my wife Carrie yeah. and my little kitten, and I just work kitten. work on music. And that's yeah, that's it. Yeah, I saw a picture of that Carrie posted your, oh, your little kitten and the silhouette of your little kitten. Uh, like on a big movie. It's so screen. photogenic. It's, it's a so kitten. Look at your little face. <laughs> That's there will strange. be many more pictures to come. I've yeah. already filled up my data card, and, 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 <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure to, to zap all my data. So oh, that's great. Just on kitten pictures. Because yeah. the internet doesn't have enough. No, the kid, yeah. <laughs> the kid, the kidternet. <laughs> the kidternet. <laughs> you know. Anyway, well, golly, I don't even know what more to say. I mean, I'm just so happy that I've had the chance to sit down with you. Because yeah. Yeah, so thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I I love your show. Thanks. Hello, internet. Oh, yeah. See, I, it's great. It's great because I'll you. be on your website later on, yeah, and I'll be saying sure hello will. to myself. Yeah, I know. Mew. Bye, Cool. Well, um, anything else you want to say before we we go? And because you're there's 83 people signed up for this class. Oh my gosh. And I know. only 25 seats, so there'll be some sort of like standing room and rotation of sorts. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, the, the venue really helps because <laughs> <laughs> if you can have a, a, a good amount of people, but in a small room, it feels packed, and that's really good. I've done shows before where like 200 people are there, but it's in a 500 person room, and it just feels empty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you were to have a smaller room, it just feel like a banging party. So yeah. I, f I feel like this. This Cakewalk Masterclass is about to be a, a super banging party. Yeah. We're about to twitch it so I, yeah. so my, my friends can tune in on the internet and see how I make, how I make the <laughs> sounds. Yeah, and is there any place that people can find you? Like, I mean, obviously they can just type in your name and everything comes up, but is there a particular location where you'd like for, to direct people that want to... Nope! <laughs> You get that? <laughs> Not at all. I am the only Incanti on the internet. And if yeah. you need to find me, just type that in and just hit send on whatever email that you find. Because it's probably Beep. me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's about that wraps it up for the night, folks. Wherever you are, you know, passion, invoke that. Listen to the music, feel the music, love feel the it. music. Love. 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 Get in here. Get in, in here. Yeah, in. come into this. Come in. Come in. Feel the Feel passion. passion. Yes. This is the. What's the Maven symbol? Oh. Live long and. <laughs> oh, right on. That was beautiful. That was awesome. <laughs> Bring it down right there.